Up next, at dusk, traffic looks slow but fine, but hundreds of accidents have happened in the biggest snow of the season so far. Now wait until you hear how cold it's going to get. And in Dimension, we took a chance and let a media critic pry into the decision-making around here on what's news and not. Brian Lambert reveals to you what he found. Your news is next. Accepting yourself as a mature adult means eating a nutritious cereal and realizing part of you still cries, Get me frosting! But that's okay. We can overcome these urges. We can deny ourselves fat and salt as long as we repress our feelings about taste! I want taste! Easy. With Kellogg's Frosted Mini Wheat, you can have it all. For the adult in you, whole grain wheat, no fat or salt. For the kid in you, lightly frosted, great taste. I'm glad I've analyzed what I really want. The frosting! I tried to stop. I just kept going back. I can't control myself. What's harder to resist than Orville Redenbacher's buttered popcorn? New Red Butters. More buttery taste than you can imagine. Drizzling over every square inch of Orville's butterfly kernels. I love it. In three irresistible flavors. Movie theater butter, urban garlic butter, and zesty butter. New Red Butters. That's cool. When you need more than just a packet or two of Equal, you can open lots of little packets or open a pouch of Equal Measure. Equal Measure is equal in a big pouch. For recipes and pictures of drinks, Equal Measure. It's equal, and it's easy. Mmm, what's that fragrance you're wearing? Exclamation! Make a statement! can't breathe. You're sneezing. Your sinuses and nasal passages are blocked. Where do you go for help? Last time you went to your doctor for a prescription. This time he told you to get the same prescription strength medicine without a prescription. Tavis D, the antihistamine decongestant that was once the most prescribed by doctors, is now the most recommended by doctors for 12 hours of relief. Good morning. Tavis D, one tablet, 12 hours, no prescription. This is Paula Zahn, daycare to suit your needs. What should you look for? Child care expert T. Barry Brazelton has some guidelines tomorrow on CBS This Morning. This is CBS.
Pizza Hut Delivery presents a Supreme Delivery Deal. Right now, you can get a medium Supreme Pizza for the supreme price of just $7.99. That's six delicious toppings, meat and veggie, all freshly baked and hot for only $7.99. So hurry, call Pizza Hut Delivery and cash in on the Supreme Delivery Deal today. Right now, you can get up to five medium pizzas for five bucks each when you buy a $7.99 medium Supreme. Five bucks. It's a deal worth repeating. Five bucks. From Pizza Hut. <laughs> At Wendy's, we thought our 99-cent Super Value menu needed some Italian flavor. Introducing Wendy's new 99-cent Junior Mozzarella Cheeseburger. It's a thick slice of rich melted mozzarella, fresh beef served hot off the grill. And to make it even more delicious, Dave whipped up his own zesty herb sauce. It's the new Junior Mozzarella Cheeseburger, and it's only on Wendy's 99-cent Super Value menu. Come try one today. I wonder how you say wow in Italian. So this is Total Bedroom. Look at all these mattresses. Style, style, style. Inner Springs waterbed. And food time. Variety and selection. Comfortable. Look, match any sleep surface with any bedroom set. Quality. Comfortable. It's really nice. And these prices are very reasonable. Affordable. And I feel better now. Why? Affordable makes me comfortable. <laughs> Total Bedroom. Your Total Bedroom store. Save on everything for your bedroom at Total Bedroom. Now open with six Twin City locations in Rochester. This is your news. For news tonight. Tonight, Minnesotans are blowing away or shoveling out from a wintry weekend. The rest of the country must think of this as Minnesota's midwinter madness. We just had the biggest snowfall of the season so far, more than eight inches, and we're headed for 30 below zero by Tuesday. That's without the wind chill. But they didn't grow up in this. Minnesotans are used to it, proud of it even. But it's only fun if you can avoid the problems. The cars not starting, pipes freezing, the accidents. This accident tonight on eastbound 394 west of Penn was just one of more than 250 fender benders and spinouts reported to the state patrol this Sunday in the metro area. None causing serious injury, though. The roads are really slick. The nice thing about living here, though, we know how to handle the snow. Plows began clearing the streets and highways late this afternoon. But what many people may want to know is that a snow emergency is in effect for the major cities. In Minneapolis, no parking on snow emergency routes from now until 8 in the morning, or you risk a ticket and a tow. Cars were supposed to be off an hour ago. In St. Paul, same story, no parking on snow emergency routes or on the posted side of other streets until 8 tomorrow morning. The rest of the St. Paul streets get plowed after 8 a.m., so you'll have to move your car again. Many of you have told us we give important information too fast, so here's how to get the full story. In Minneapolis, you can call 348-SNOW. In St. Paul, call 292-6600. And we'll repeat these numbers for you coming up after weather. Snow emergency rules are also in effect in Bloomington, Richfield, and Hopkins. And there are also some serious warnings about weather dangers later tonight and tomorrow. Matt Bailo has the latest on that from our roof. Yes, Scott, I'm outside here to show you a couple of things. First of all, part of the 8.4 inches of snow that we got, this is a very light, fluffy snow. It blows around very easily, and it is blowing and drifting across western Minnesota. Visibility is there near zero. Some highways have a couple feet of snow in them because of the blowing and drifting. Here in the Twin Cities, that wind will be here later tonight and tomorrow. The National Weather Service has issued a wind chill warning in effect for all of eastern Minnesota and a wind chill advisory for western uh, Wisconsin. That is for dangerously cold wind chills of 40 to 70 below later tonight and throughout the day tomorrow and a winter storm warning for the blowing and drifting snow and the wind chills back in the western part of the state. We're going to have some colder temperatures. In fact, it's going to get colder before it gets warmer, but there is some light at the end of the tunnel, and I'll tell you about it in a few minutes. Scott? Okay, we're waiting for that. Thanks, Matt. Amy? Well, the extreme cold up north has caused a serious problem for the small town of Halleck. A pipe to the town's water tower froze and 10 water mains broke. Tonight, water service has been restored to all but about 40 families. Those families are walking over to the nearby city hall to get water until the pipes are fixed. And now a summary of other news from this weekend. Authorities say a Delano man was murdered last night. That happened at a home in Rockford, Minnesota. 26-year-old Galen McNeil was shot during a domestic dispute. Authorities have arrested the 51-year-old man who lived in that house. A house fire in St. Paul this morning killed one man and hospitalized two other people. That blaze started just before 8 o'clock this morning at 1551 Lyon Avenue. Authorities say a 19-year-old man died. Still no word on the cause of that fire, but the arson unit has begun investigating. 
Early Friday morning, fire destroyed an auto body shop in Maple Plain, a business that owner Rick Snitterich spent 10 years building. It's hard to tell what is salvageable because what the fire left behind is now frozen. Rick and his wife plan to rebuild the business, but it's going to be tough. Well, I have no insurance on my personal belongings and my tools. It's because it's, uh, you know, I've been starting your own business. It's tough, and I've had to choose between health insurance for my family and kids or insuring my tools. Rick will actually be back to work tomorrow. Some friends in the business are loaning him some workspace and tools. Well, if you needed a haircut today and you didn't mind getting out in the snow and the cold, you could have looked good and done some good at the same time. The money paid by these clients for haircuts and other salon services today went to help battered women. Rocco Altabelli's salon in Roseville donated 100% of its fees to the Minnesota Battered Women's Coalition. The cutathon went from noon until 6. About 75 people showing up there today. Good for them. Well, Minnesotans are known for their generosity. Tomorrow, some are heading for a much warmer climate, but it's not a vacation. Construction workers, health care providers, and just folks wanting to volunteer are heading to Honduras to help those living in poverty. Jonathan Elias has the story. Home video from a place known for two things, its beauty and its poverty. This is the village of Laguama in Honduras. These people walked for miles on their bare feet on these hard roads between towns, just hoping somebody would be there to uh, help. Last year, Minneapolis chiropractor Edward Schmidt was there, volunteering his help for two weeks. Now, he's packing and paying his way to do it again. It's so badly needed. I mean, people die because they don't have care. The nearest hospital, I think the pickup ride was an hour and a half. It's a distance some Minnesota volunteers are working to shorten. I went the first year and and I thought it would, it was just one year, you know, and uh, I'm going back six years. Gilbert Sanchez is also packing for Honduras, a retired iron worker who's come out of retirement to help build a medical clinic in La Guama. There is no Kmart, there is no Knox Lumber, there is no suppliers there. I mean, you know, you have to go into town and they have to bring the raw materials out. All the bricks you see were built from scratch by villagers. Sanchez, the one in the hat, is helping oversee the construction. It could be finished by late this year. Already, a doctor from a neighboring village says he intends to move his practice there. In Minneapolis, Jonathan Elias, 4 News Sunday. Now, because all of the clinic's building materials are handmade, it's taken more than three years to build. As soon as it goes online, it will help more than 1,200 people who live in the village. And also on the bright side, one man's dream still shines. Dr. Martin Luther King Jr.'s birthday is inspiring thoughtful remembrance and celebration. That's music from the Steels headlining today's annual Martin Luther King Jr. Memorial Concert at the University of Minnesota. Among the events tomorrow on the official holiday, a rally on the state capitol steps beginning at 1015 with a march to the cathedral at 1050. And I'm sure the cold won't stop many people from going out who plan to go to that. I'm sure they'll bundle up appropriately. We have more news to come, including figure skater Tanya Harding's first statement since the arrest of her bodyguard in the Nancy Kerrigan beating. And you must have an opinion about what news stories we do and don't cover. Who makes those decisions and are they flawed? Tonight we turn Dimension over to newspaper critic Brian Lambert, who tells you what he found in a revealing story about your news coming up. You're watching 4 News Tonight. Right now, the prices are so low at Slumberland Furniture, they're impossible. Quilted twin mattresses as low as $49. Sealy Extra Firm Queen sets from $279. Don't miss this elegant sofa, impossibly priced at $399. Or buy the entire room and save even more. Dozens of living room and bedroom groups, all at impossibly low sale prices. Save on the best selection of reclining furniture and sleep sofas in the Midwest. The impossible sale positively ends Monday at Slumberland Furniture. You just can't do better. It's all or nothing. Well, actually, it's all and nothing. No, 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 you ninny. It's always been all or nothing. Look, this week, it's all and nothing. Tis not. Tis too. Tis, Tis not. not. Feast thine eyes upon this. Thanks. Maketh no payments, payeth no interest for six months on everything at Best Buy. Everything? Really? Oh, good then. I guess it is all and nothing. Storm and the castle. Shall we have the right address? Hi, I'm Amy Grant. You know, if you're like me, you probably look around your community and think, there's so much that needs doing. Well, I wish I could help. But you don't know where to begin. 
Well, I have news for you. We've been helping all along. Every time you and I shop at Target, they take a portion of what we spend and put it right back into our communities. No other store gives away a bigger percentage of its profits. So let your dollar make a difference. You'll be surprised at what you can save shopping at Target. Ford Escort is America's best-selling small car. And now it's an even better value with a special $500 cash lease bonus from Ford. You pay only $198 a month for 24 months with an additional $500 down. So what else does America's best-selling small car have? A standard driver's airbag, rear defrost, air, stereo, and your choice of four models for only $198 a month. And now a special $500 lease bonus for a limited time only at your Northland Ford dealer. The Investment Connection. Hi, can I help you? Hi, we have a new baby and I'm already thinking about college for her. One call could be the best investment you ever make. President and Mrs. Clinton are back in Washington tonight after a trip to Europe. His work today there leads your world news tonight. The president earlier met in Geneva with Syrian President yes, Hafez Assad. Afterward, Assad says he's offering Israel what he called normal, peaceful relations in exchange for land. In California, lines of squad cars chased people in a stolen pickup truck for 135 miles. The pickup reportedly was carjacked in central California, then spotted by police who chased it to L.A. The people inside the truck began shooting. They finally crashed near the Civic Center and ran. Now they're holding a hostage. In upstate New York, searchers began using heavy equipment to search for the remains of a missing 12-year-old girl, Sarah Ann Wood. Suspected serial killer Lewis Lent Jr. directed them to the site. In India, 100 people are feared dead after two ferry boats collided. They were loaded with people returning from a pilgrimage. And in Paris, five fashion supermodels posed nude behind a banner that says, we'd rather go naked than wear fur. It was a photo opportunity for an animal rights group, which plans to use it on billboards. And Billy Crystal, Whoopi Goldberg, and Robin Williams hosted the sixth annual Comic Relief Fundraiser last night. In six years, they've raised $20 million to pay for health care for the homeless. And Matt is joining us now from the roof again. And Matt, what we want to know is can we expect any relief anytime soon? There is some relief on the way, Amy, but it will be colder before it gets warmer. And in fact, right now, temperatures don't look like they'll be really warming up until later on in the week upcoming, something like Thursday or on the order of Friday. In the meantime, temperatures today never did make it above zero. And if you didn't have to go outside, it was a good thing that you didn't because with the new snowfall, 8.4 inches, it caused some real problems. These are just some of the scenes around the Twin Cities on major highways, which were plowed first and, of course, were most traveled. Still, road conditions are pretty nasty out there then. They are even now. And again, if you don't have to go outside tonight, and actually for the next couple of days, you probably shouldn't, limit your driving if you can, because uh, conditions will be much slower tomorrow morning. And in the meantime, temperatures very cool. Colder than normal by about 20 degrees. Zero was the high, 15 below the low temperature, 8.4 inches of snow officially out at the National Weather Service. This snow fell at a snow to water ratio of 32 to 1. Right now outside we have 9 degrees below zero. It's mostly cloudy. The wind chill 26 below. That's because we have a northwest wind. It's at 8 miles per hour. The new snow that fell overnight, well most of it was across the southern metropolitan area and across southern Minnesota from Redwood Falls to the Twin Cities all the way down to around Winona. We had a band of six to nine inches. Elsewhere across southern Minnesota it was between three and six inches of snow. The snowfall moved down to the east. Now the coldest temperatures are currently back in central Minnesota where they're currently in the teens below zero. But as you saw at the top of the show, a winter storm warning in effect for the west and a wind chill uh, warning here in the east because wind chills there are in the 50s below. And all of that wind that they are currently getting is headed in our direction, and that should be here in just the next few hours. Satellite pictures over the past 24 hours show the storm as it made its way from west to east. Right now it's located down in Iowa. It's moving to the east, and as it moves on, those northwest winds, as I mentioned, should start to pick up. There is some clearing that has gone on back in northwestern Minnesota, and we could actually see some sunshine tomorrow, as they have plenty of sunshine right now in southern Canada. But as we take a larger picture here, you'll be able to see that over the next 24 hours, really not too much is going to change. We've got one more big batch of some bitterly cold air that's going to make its way across Minnesota in the upper Midwest. That bitterly cold air will be with us tomorrow, Tuesday, and probably through Wednesday. And that means that temperatures are going to be extremely cold, especially in the mornings. And just for the record, Tuesday morning and Wednesday morning, our records are 31 and 34 below, respectively. And we're forecasting temperatures within about 4 degrees of that. So uh, we could, we may as well set a record if it's going to be this cold, really. Your forecast for the rest of the night tonight, then, is calling for that storm system to move on 
we are expecting to have temperatures be much colder, teens below zero, and that wind out of the northwest picking up at 10 to 20. A wind chill warning still in effect throughout the day tomorrow. Temperatures will stay in the teens below zero. We should have some sunshine out there, and northwest winds at 15 to 25. And then the really cold mornings, two of them. One on Tuesday, it'll be 27 below then, and we'll have a few flurries around. And then coming up on Tuesday, a high temperature of only 11 below, so still very cold. The extended outlook Wednesday through Friday, giving us another cold morning on Wednesday, but temperatures back above zero on Thursday and warmer for Friday. In fact, one of our extended outlooks that goes further than that into Saturday is calling for temperatures in the 30s. I don't know if I'd believe it, 30s above zero. <laughs> yeah, but right. it looks like there is some warmer weather coming up toward the latter part of this week. So we'll have three or four more very cold days. Again, just follow the same rules you've been following so far. You're a glutton for punishment up there on the roof. <laughs> uh, I love it, but it's getting a little thin now. Okay, thanks, Matt. Thanks. Well, repeating our top story now, snow emergencies have been declared for the major cities. And for the latest information in Minneapolis, the number to call is 348-SNOW. And in St. Paul, the number to call is 292-6600. The short advice, don't park on snow emergency routes from now until after 8 o'clock tomorrow morning. Nothing worse than waking up and the car is it's gone. It's gone. You've got to pay to get it back. Dimension. Ever wonder who decides what makes the local news? 4 News gave a newspaper reporter free access to find out. Get an inside look next in Dimension. Your weather has been sponsored by NSP. The energy to make things better. At NSP, our recipe for reliable energy includes low sulfur coal for some of our plants, additional emphasis on renewable resources like water and wind power, a little oil and natural gas when electrical use is heavy, and steam from nuclear power, our most efficient energy source, which helps keep rates low. The yield? Inexpensive, reliable energy you can count on. And as always, our plans call for your energy conservation, too. Get ready for the hottest new car value in the heartland. Believe it. Chevy Cavalier. 189. 36 months. Low down payment. But only for a very limited time. Hurry to your nearest heartland Chevy Geo dealer. Some people remember me as the mayor of Palm Springs or from Sunny and Cher. Most people remember my smile. You see, a good looking smile comes from healthy teeth and healthy gums. With the Gingy Brush Gum Therapy System, you can keep your smile looking good too. Gingy Brush with baking soda gel is professionally designed to massage gums, remove plaque, and fight gingivitis. Brush your teeth and your gums with Gingy Brush. It'll give you a smile to remember. Available at Walgreens. So this is total bedroom. Looks like they've got everything. Style, style, style. For my bedroom. And mine. Variety and selection. All these bedroom sets. I found what I want. Quality. And every kind of mattress. I found what I want. Nice prices. Affordable. A futon. Cool. I found what I want. Me too. Everything. Total bedroom. Your total bedroom store. Save on everything for your bedrooms at Total Bedroom. Now open with six Twin City locations in Rochester. Maybe the Holocaust will never happen again. Maybe it's happening already. Does this man have the answer? Next, Oprah. Monday at 4 on Channel 4. Tonight in Dimension, who decides what's news? We feel the stories we air on WCCO are newsworthy, but except for major events, we work in a time frame like every other TV newscast. Unlike newspapers, we can't add a page on a heavy news day. Keeping that in mind, there are stories you see and don't see. The people here at WCCO who determine what's news are at the core of every broadcast. Who are these people? That was a question the public asked at our feedback for sessions. So we enlisted an impartial observer to critique the process. Media critic Brian Lambert of the St. Paul Pioneer Press. Brian provided the script collaborating with WCCO's Dennis Trigichu, who produced tonight's Dimension. Do you want to make a phone call? It'd be pretty vicious. Stand by, here you! You are looking at eastbound I-94, luckily no... The winter storm is bringing traffic to a standstill all across the... The anchors and reporters of television news may be familiar characters. This is most likely the reason why. 
I'll just do a stand-up. You got my memo on that. Could one of them was pulling teeth to get a story. I think they're lying to us about their numbers. Two sides of this story. One person says... But you probably know very little about the people who actually decide what is news and why it is news. Anything else that uh, we talked about should be on here? Newsflash. Camp Snoopy has <laughs> bugs. And uh, maybe do an update on fetuses. Today, January 5th, is a relatively slow news day. But there's a breakthrough in science, a possible school strike, and bugs in the mega mall. Most significantly, it's beginning to snow. That would, that would mean about five inches, which is about what we're probably going to get. But there are a dozen more stories that aren't mentioned at all in the early meeting, like the new FBI statistics on black-on-black -on -black crime. Which story will get a bigger piece of the pie at five, six, and ten? More to the point, which stories won't get any attention at all? My philosophy is I think people have a curiosity of what's happened that day. If you can solve that uh, curiosity in one, two, three minutes or four minutes that you have to do that, I, I think you've kind of done half your job. Each weekday morning, John Montgomery waits through overnight reports, scores of mail and facts, voicemail, and wire looking for story ideas for that day's news. But news isn't always the highest criteria. But uh, at the same time, I think people want to be entertained. Uh, they also want to be uh, advised about something that's happening that's important for them to know. I mean, they want to know, you know, something interesting. Is the news hard enough? Yeah, I think so. Uh, would I like more time to tell all the things that we have here? Yes. It's an open secret in the news business that a lot of what goes on in television news is essentially showbiz. And uh, the people who are real professionals acknowledge this. Uh, they don't want to make too big a deal out of it. But uh, it, it does create problems. Uh, you know, you, 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 you develop a sort of an instinct to avoid stories that, were, that, aren't, um, that aren't as sexy as other stories are. You avoid stories that don't have as good a pictures as other stories have. Is this the hit and run wheelchair? Another key player is Tom Ziegler, acting managing editor. He and Montgomery will now decide 15% of the stories to be covered. Knowing that barring a major catastrophe, nearly 40% of the 22-minute newscast will always be devoted to weather and sports. Ziegler runs the 9 a.m. meeting when producers and reporters pitch their story ideas. We won't stop at the railroad crossing. It's still just a two-month trend. That would be the Dave Dahl guy, up to a foot of snow. He's talking about. Then I think we'll have to use the Dave Dahl bias factor and mean that. That would mean about five inches which is about what we're probably going to get. There's a free flow of ideas, but not all are original. I don't know if you read the big headlines. Cops beat them, two black women in the crowd or whatever. I don't know what was the headline. The uh, uh, department statement on gays causes backlash in the social works department. A basic issue is whether the news is enterprising, something the station's reporters dig up on their own, or reactionary, something they're pulling from other sources. But we may take something out of page three, or the front of the metro section, or the front of the business section, mm -hmm. and try to blow those things up. Because those are stories that either fit a niche that day, or we think, those are pretty important stories. Maybe we can make it our story by turning it up a notch. Television has a reputation now, and I think it's comfortable with the reputation, that it is a, is a headline service. It is a, um, a, full of arresting images and things. And I don't know that, um, uh, that it, it's, it's a perfect marriage if, um, if, if you are in the business then of, of following essentially headlines that have been created somewhere else. It's a good lead. Everybody wants to know whether it's going to affect their drive, whether it's going to affect their whatever plans they may be making. So it's a, it's a classic story that hits almost everybody. By now the newscast has taken its basic shape with staff awareness of competitive pressures. I, mean, I, worry about, I just want to throw out underdone on the weather. I mean, I know we... It's winter, but... Man. I could also just put a reporter out live somewhere to do the sky view shots rather than having the anchor drive it. Remember there was certain <clears throat> talk from people above us that we had to start being the big shots on weather again? It's a candid offhand remark. But why the mandate when the storm is at worst normal and the picture's routine? I can't imagine anything more important than a severe weather story in a given news day if it in fact is threatening lives and property. It's always a curiosity to me that you want to spend that much time at the top of the show telling people what everybody already knows. What it means is you have to sacrifice other stories that are coming out. We'll add the six plus here with the heaviest band of snow. Indeed, weather led all newscast that day. Hurry up, Johnny, hurry up. The fundamental difference between television news and, say, newspapers isn't just the TV feeds on pictures, but that on a very basic level, its success depends on entertaining you and me. We have to like what we see or how we see it. And in that way, news decision making is a bit like the old rock and roll refrain. Meet the new boys, same as the old boys. Hope you two can find some time to get out and enjoy one of the first big snows of the season. I know one guy that's going to be out. Yeah, I will. I'm on the skis.
Here's CBS. And Brian joins us now to give us a little more perspective. Brian, how different is decision making in the newsroom here from the newspaper? Well, I think the biggest difference is, is again, the idea of pictures. Uh, newspapers can go with stories that don't have a natural um, um, sexy image to them. We're kind of loath to do that. We're trying to get up in the market uh, in that way, too. But the, the, the picture difference is the main one, I think. Brian, if you could make a couple of changes right away. You're news director tomorrow here at Channel 4. What are the first couple <laughs> things you'd do? I think the first thing I'd do is the, the headline news service is not a bad one. There's a lot of community news. Deliver the headlines. I mean, just give us these, uh, these quick shots, even if there aren't the pictures behind it. And um, that would be, I think, a, a useful service that uh, the television could provide uh, on a reasonable budget and limited time. All right. Would you like to be news director? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> More disappointed or less now that you've been in here for a day? I'm, uh, I was realistic about it, that uh, you folks do a good job generally. Okay. Thanks for joining us, Brian. And by the way, as part of our project Eye on Crime, we are joining the Star Tribune newspaper and covering a project known as COP, C-O-P, which stands for Community Oriented Policing. Watch that newspaper tomorrow for something called Public Works. It's the Star Tribune's new effort in reporting on community concerns. The first focus is an examination of this new concept in police work. Then watch tomorrow night's dimension when Tom Gasparoli profiles an officer whose professional life revolves around this concept. And we're interested in hearing from you about this and other issues relating to crime. If you'd like to hold a Feedback 4 session, please write us at this address. Feedback 4, WCCO-TV. That's 90 South 11th Street, Minneapolis, zip code 55403. At 4 News, we're asking you what you want from news. I don't mind that national news is part of a local broadcast if it's not, uh, if it doesn't fill up the broadcast too much. Well, when world or national news that directly affects us happens, then we will cover it in detail. Otherwise, we'll kind of package that news in a headline fashion so you'll at least know these things happen. That will give us more time to focus on the important things that are happening here at home. From now on, it's not just the news. It's your news. Get ready for the hottest new truck value in the heartland. Believe it. Chevy Silverado, 249, 24 months, low down payment, but only for a very limited time. Hurry to your nearest Heartland Chevy Geo dealer. Jay's here to talk about the Cowboys and their win. Yeah, the last of the uh, the last of the Mohicans from the NFC Central bit the dust. The Green Bay Packers they are put out. Put up a mm -hmm. good fight, though. They certainly did. Cowboys 27, Packers 17. Without question, though, the the best two teams meet for the NFC title next Sunday as Dallas will host Steve Young and the San Francisco 49ers. Well, this afternoon, in the playoffs, win a, win a game or two, I think it could prepare you to, to do better things the years for the years to come. So. You know, I'm really encouraged about the direction this team is going in. So Dallas moves on to face the 49ers in the NFC Championship game Sunday at 3 in the Big D and right here on Channel 4. In Houston, another patented fourth quarter comeback for Joe Montana as the Chiefs beat Houston 28-20. Great catch by Willie Davis gives the Chiefs a 21-13 lead. But Warren Moon led the Oilers back to within a point. Ernest Givens, it's 21-20. Buddy Ryan's defense, though, could not keep Marcus Allen out of the end zone as the Chiefs sewed this one up 28 to 20. The final, Montana's 29th come from behind win. You got to go to Buffalo. You know, we got a tough, we, we played them once already. We know what they can do and what we can do. And 
going to be another tough game back there, but we're still alive. Yes, you are, Joe. The Buffalo Bills stand between Montana and a fifth Super Bowl. His first with the Chiefs, of course. Buffalo has been to and lost the last three. Mark Rosen is next with a coach's eye view of the playoffs on Sports Sunday. Defensive coordinator Tony Dungy will dissect today's playoff action. Also on the couch, go for athletic director McKinley Boston, talking about the Black Coaches Association and other issues. And the Sports Sunday phone lines are open. 330-9030 puts you on the line with Mark and Sid. So join us for that. From the front page to the sports page, current affair to 60 minutes, the Nancy Kerrigan attack is on everybody's lips and shows. Tanya Harding, who surfaced briefly yesterday, avoided the cameras again today, but the husband and wife team that coaches and represents her legally made a case for their skater. In media speculation that she was involved in any way with the Kerrigan assault. Tanya is shocked and angry that anyone close to her might be involved. Tanya did not believe for a minute that anyone around her would have been involved in such an, a horrible happening. It's still coming out now. Yes, it is coming out now, and she has distanced herself from the people that have been involved. In other developments, U.S. Olympic officials met today to discuss their options if Harding is linked to the plot. They'd like to resolve that matter in the next few days. The president of the U.S. Olympic Committee admitted that Harding's withdrawal from the Olympics would be, quote, the easiest possible way out. Meanwhile, Nancy Kerrigan returned to the ice skate, uh, skating for s the first time, some simple stuff, no jumps. Kerrigan said her knee was stiff, but the workout did feel good. After last night's loss to Penn State, at Penn State, you can expect an extra intense gopher basketball team at their next game. That's Thursday night against 11th rated Michigan at Williams Arena. Well, the Wolverines are going to be two because they lost on the road despite a strong start today at Indiana. Jimmy King skying for the slam, and Michigan jumped to a 34-19 lead. But it's so hard to win on the road in general, at Indiana in particular. Damon Bailey went wild in the second half when he was able to stay in the game, that is. Bailey scored most of his 18 after the break between stints on the bench where his legs were massaged to get rid of cramps. He also breathed into a bag to avoid hyperventilating. Indiana's defense and crowd clearly rattled Michigan, which came into the game ranked number 10. 11th rated Indiana has the longest home court winning streak in the nation after today's 10 point win, 82-72 over the Wolverines. They also have the longest winning streak in the Big Ten. As you can see, they're the only unbeaten at 3 and 0. Oh, the Gophers would have been there too had they not lost at Penn State last night. Florida State guard Charlie Ward is back from a brief vacation. The Heisman Trophy quarterback wears number 12 for the Seminole basketball team, which thrives on his leadership almost as much as the national championship football team. His passing is a key as well. Ward with five points, six assists in his return to the hard court. But Florida State lost the game 78-70 at North Carolina State. So okay. that's it. All right. Thanks, Mark, standing by. Okay. We'll be right back. <laughs> Your weather has been sponsored by Partner Herbicide from Monsanto. Partner, season-long control that's easy to handle. At first glance, Partner may look like any other dry herbicide, but closer examination reveals something remarkable. Locked inside each microcapsule of Partner is a full season of superior grass control, the kind of timed release control you need for cleaner fields and bigger yields. So if you're looking for grass control that stands the test of time, take a close look at Partner Season Long Control that's easy to handle. Dodge Ram has changed the rules for winter driving. With its Magnum engine, available four-wheel anti-lock brakes, and standard driver's side airbag, Ram is a great way to blow through the drifts. And with $1,600 in available package savings, Ram won't blow through your budget. So get into a new Dodge Ram today because it's about time winter started playing by your rules. See in Test Drive Motor Trend's Truck of the Year, the all-new Dodge Ram, at your Dodge dealer today. Steve, how can one phone line do the work of two? <laughs> I don't know. How can you prioritize your incoming calls? <laughs> I don't know. Ask me something about plumbing. <laughs> don't worry, Steve. The small business group at U.S. West is here to handle your phones. And now during our free installation proclamation, we're installing lots of products free. Call us to find out which ones can help your business. After all, you know plumbing. And 
we know phones. The small business group at U.S. West. When it comes to trucks, you've heard a lot about one saying they're like a rock, and another one saying the rules have changed. Well, that's just dandy if you like sitting still like a rock. And wouldn't it be nice if you could change the rules in any game you weren't winning? Well, if you just want the best truck money can buy, the truck that thousands have invested in 17 years in a row. Your local Ford dealer's got it. The Ford F-Series, the best-selling truck in America. Again, seems like the rules have not changed. Some sweet music to the ears of many country music fans last night in Tucson, Arizona. Tammy Wynette returned to the stage after nearly dying from an infection. She sang about two-thirds of her usual song list. She told concert organizers that her voice was lacking, but the audience didn't mind. Wynette got a standing ovation. I wish we'd have had some natural sound of her singing there. We'd have let you hear a little, but uh, that Strong we didn't. woman made a recovery. One last weather check. Boy, no standing ovation here. In fact, we've got a wind chill warning in effect for tonight and tomorrow for all of eastern Minnesota. Stay warm, folks. We'll see you next weekend. Have a good night, Rosen. Big news from the big screen company. Mitsubishi announces their biggest finance opportunity ever on all big screen and big tube television. Buy a Mitsubishi big screen by Super Bowl Sunday and pay no money down, pay no interest, and make no payments for one full year. That's a full year of big screen sports and entertainment without you paying a penny. You want it, Mitsubishi has it. Audio King, it's your choice. Looking for a better way to get through the winter? Try a Dodge Caravan from your Dodge minivan store. With front-wheel drive traction and automatic transmission, Caravan takes ice and snow in stride. And because winter won't last forever, you can even get one with air conditioning at no extra charge, plus $500 cash back. Dodge Caravan, the best way to get over the river or through the woods to grandma's or anywhere else. America's best-selling minivan, Dodge Caravan. Ah, another Minnesota winter. The trick, of course, is to stay active. Keep the mind alert. An easy way to do both is to play Bernie Bear, the new $1 instant game from the Minnesota State Lottery. Match three winter symbols and win up to $5,000. So play Bernie Bear, and before you know it, you'll be seeing signs of spring. You're watching WCCO Television, Minneapolis, St. Paul. Live from the Twin Cities, it's Rosen Sports Sunday. Sponsored by Northland Ford. Five of the top ten selling vehicles in America are Fords. Just because the Vikings were Packers this week doesn't mean we put away our pigskin. While the NFL today hired the head guy, we brought in Tony Dungy to pick apart the playoffs. In the NFC, the Giants and Packers were creamed as the cream rose to the top. Here's one way to stop Emmett Smith, take off his pads. In Houston, Buddy's defense was punchless, while Super Joe struck a familiar pose. Courtside will examine why black coaches are hot under the collar. Plus, we pay tribute to Shaq and to Winter Sports. Night is falling on the Twin Cities, yeah. Rosen Sport Sunday is coming at your life tonight. Rosen, Rosen Sport Sunday, gonna be live tonight. Shot head but cool. In a game that Rosie don't, don't cover, kick back. Cool out, it's time for another Rosen, Rosen Sport Sunday. Good evening and welcome to Sports Sunday. We'll be here until the Winter Olympics begin, at which time CBS will be filling this time slot with a half-hour update show. And uh, the way this Tanya Harding, Nancy Kerrigan story is unfolding, or Skategate as they're calling it, CBS will need and I'm sure want an hour each night to deal with this subject. The other away from the arena story which dominated the news this week was the threatened boycott by the Black Coaches Association directly affecting Division I basketball. 
An offer of mediation by a division of the Justice Department helped avoid a walkout this weekend. Clem Haskins of the Gophers and a very emotional Nolan Richardson of Arkansas said it's about a lot more than the loss of one scholarship. I'm here at an education institution. Uh, I feel my job is just as important as a professor in whatever department may be in. We also educate our young people. We have to be in the field of athletics, and we're teachers first, and I think coaches second. And uh, those type of things, I think somewhere get, get missed along the line that we somehow want to win basketball game and young, use young people. This is 1994. We got three black coaches, and 49% of the kids are black playing football. You tell me that's progress. See, I have a problem with more than just a scholarship. I have a problem with that. Kid wins a Heisman Trophy Award, all he can do is go play pro football. Can he not be the Florida State football coach one day? That's the problems Nolan has. You see, I'm addressing every issue. The sad part of it, every time I see a kid, he's, he's a prop 48. And I'm sitting there on TV and look at my wife and say, what the hell does that mean, that he's dumb? Have we given him the numbers now? I'm so sick of numbers, 42, 16. Take those numbers and stick them somewhere. Well, to help us dissect the issues at hand, U of M men's athletic director, Dr. McKinley Boston, and a bit later, former U of M star, quarterback, now defensive coordinator of the Minnesota Vikings, Tony Dungy. First of all, Dr. Boston, you just heard what a, a very emotional Nolan Richardson had to say. Uh, your reaction to the way he sort of proposed the entire package of the issues here. Mark, I think for the first time, um, it was talked about in the context of uh, issues of inclusion, issues of representation, uh, far more so than the 14th scholarship. Um, when the BCA put out its original list of concerns, uh, the 14th scholarship was one of them, but uh, what they were concerned about was representation, and they were concerned about a voice. And one of the loud, uh, I mean, one of the very clear issues was, will uh, the Black Coach Association and minorities in general have a voice in college athletics and in higher education? And uh, as you and I were talking off the air, one of the things, I mean, you can look at the numbers and see that those issues have merit. For example, uh, the strongest voice in college athletics today is the President's Commission. There's absolutely no people of color in the President's Commission. Uh, I believe a few years ago there was one or two, but now there is none. If you look at uh, faculty in uh, higher education, uh, the latest numbers I saw were less than 4% of all faculty in uh, higher education are black. If you look at uh, faculty reps, obviously if there are no black faculty, you're going to have very few faculty reps. If you look at uh, athletic directors, I'm one of four in Division I uh, athletics out of about 300. Is a boycott the, the best way of getting, is the best mechanism of getting these voices heard? And where does that exactly stand right now? Because the mediation may or may not work. What is the latest you've heard, Mac? The latest that I heard was that the NCAA was not going to accept uh, the Justice Department as binding arbitration. Now, I have not. Uh, seen anything definitively on that, but that is what I heard. Uh, but if you, but you say is a boycott the issue? Let me give you an example. I don't want and and I and I know you're somewhat uh, tight timetable, but let me give you an example. Martin Luther King became, and this is certainly appropriate, considering tomorrow is Martin Luther King's birthday. Martin Luther King became the voice of Black America and and as a leader in the 1960s. In my opinion not because at the time his ideology was great. I mean, he, he, he had a doctrine of nonviolence. There was another voice a, a, that was loud and clear, the voice of Malcolm X, right. the voice of Rap Brown. There was a black nationalist group that gave America a choice. And America looked at those choices and say, I think Martin Luther King's message has more that would fit better and serve better all Americans. So America had a choice. I'm not so sure that mm -hmm. in the context of negotiating and in the context of trying to accept a doctrine that if, you, if that there isn't other choices, sometimes uh, things sort of drag on. Well, that's, and it's interesting as you bring that parallel from Martin Luther King to a basketball scholarship. It seems there's a, there's a balance, and yet there's, there's clearly other issues involved. And no doubt that the reduction in men's basketball scholarships from 15 and 91 to 13 this year is a very hot button. At least that's one of the issues that got it going. And 
is there a chance this could get, is there, is there a compromise involved with this issue? Uh, personally, uh, I, I really don't think that the 14th scholarship is an issue. Personally, mm -hmm. I opted to vote uh, against the 14th scholarship. Uh, university attempted to change its mind, but that's a whole another set of issues. But the reason that I chose not to vote for it is that it became simply a management issue. Mm -hmm. We needed to address the escalating costs of college athletics. The realistic issue there was that two years ago we attempted to reduce scholarship costs by 10 percent. Mm -hmm. And that was 10 percent across the board. Uh, the uh, football was reduced 10 percent. Hockey, everybody was reduced 10 percent. Uh, th the cost of college athletics is still an issue. If, in fact, we had given the 14th scholarship back, next year football would have come back and said, we want our 15. Uh, I mean, we want our numbers back. Hockey would have said, we want our numbers Other back. And they would have said probably, well, if in fact uh, we can use, if basketball coaches could use their players to threaten, we're going to use ours. So from that vantage point, it, yeah. it just didn't fly well. But let's, the, go ahead. Let's move on to the next issue as well, because that's the entrance requirements, which I know can be and has been a hot yeah. button with you. Yeah, that 95 one. 95 is a, is a scheduled new uh, scholarship admittance for freshmen, right? Yeah, 1995. In order to understand that, you got to understand where we are now. Uh, Proposition 48 was put in place a few years ago, and basically Proposition 48 in summary says that you must graduate from high school with a 2.0 mm -hmm. overall grade point average. You also must have a 2 point average in a, I think, 13 core courses, and uh, you must have either a 17 SAT score or a, a 700 SAT score. The new eligibility standards says that if in fact they now put an indexing in, if in fact you have a 2.5 grade point average, you still can have a 2.0, um, you can have a 2, if you have a 2.5 grade point average, you can now have a seven, 700 SAT or a 17 SAT. Here's where the issue now gets complicated. That same kid now uh, in 1995, if they have a 2.0 grade point average, they now have to score 900 on the SAT, or I think it's uh, 20, 21 on the ACT. Well, the national average for black, for the national average score for black males in 1990 on the SAT score was 777. Okay, so if in fact we're now saying that same kid with a 2.0, right, may not get in. Uh, Mark, you don't have to be a rocket scientist no. to know that they're not going to close the gap that quickly. No, no way. Because now we go back to the schools, and, and the economic problems associated with the schools are such that you don't expect it to change. Tony, let's get, get your viewpoint as uh, someone who was recruited uh, out of Jackson, Michigan back in 1973 by a number of schools, ended up coming here to the University of Minnesota. What are the main issues in your mind as you sort of look on the outside, looking in at some of the things that Dr. Boston's talking about as well? Well, I think the, the big issue is opportunity, and uh, I think college in itself is supposed to be about opportunity, opportunity to learn, opportunity to grow as an individual. And when you start legislating against opportunity, I think that can be a problem. So uh, from that standpoint, I really stand in agreement with, with a lot of the coaches. And, you know, maybe uh, Nolan Richardson made the big point, too, about Charlie Ward. Uh, and that maybe is the biggest button, because you are involved in that as well, someone who's looking for that maybe head coaching job down the road here. Can Charlie Ward ever get that opportunity to not only be a Heisman Trophy winner, but the head coach of a football team, considering there are only three African-American coaches in college football. Well, that seems to be a very, very slow uh, place where we've made progress, and, and uh, that's what everyone is looking at, the opportunities to not only be the quarterback, not only be the athlete, but to, to do a lot of things in the university and get that education and, and go on and be a, a viable leader in the community. And, and we need those opportunities, and it seems like they're getting squeezed. We'll be hearing a lot more about this issue, I'm sure, as uh, this week progresses and beyond. Uh, Boston, Dr. Boston, thank you much for stopping by. Okay, Mark. Tony, don't go away. We're going to be back with you in just a minute. Uh, you know, you guys probably were this on Friday night. The Shaquille O'Neal Show took over the Target Center on Friday, and win or lose,